uh, one of them did this. I all I remember is that he just kind of waved his hand in front of his chest, and the next thing I know, this blue beam hit me and just literally opened me up like a fish, and every, uh, burnt burnt my fingers right off of me, and it was some form of electrical force because the kind of like hit being hit by a lightning bolt burned all my toenails off of me, uh, completely crispy crittered my left foot burnt the shoe right off of me. Um, all I remember is the smoking remains and I'm laying almost, I'm still conscious but in and out of, I didn't remember much. And there was a, a Green Beret that was right behind me that risked his life, in fact he died. But he risked his life, he shoved me back in the bass and hit the button and took me up. And I wouldn't be alive talking to you today if it wasn't for him. I'm forever indebted. He lost his life. 66 Secret Service agents, Green Berets, Black Berets, crack troops lost their lives because the government, our United States government, lied, did not tell us anything about the alien threat. There's a war underneath there, and I'm d talking dead serious. It's been going on since that time. Since Late August of 1979, our military, the Russian military, basically the militaries of the world, have been in constant conflict with the outer space alien. The, the small gray, the large gray, the reptilians, the whole thing. There are, 11, there are 11 distinct races of aliens. Two are benevolent. One had to leave here in a hurry because their world is under attack, both on the surface of all the underground there, the Pleiadesians. They're familiar. Maybe some of you are familiar with that. Uh, would some of you raise your hands who've heard of Billy Meyer and uh, some of the, uh, oh, very good, about half the group. Well, Billy Meyer is one of these lucky people that they figured, well, he's kind of a simple type. We'll show him everything. Well, these are the benevolent aliens, and they've been here helping us. In fact, I have a picture. I have a picture. Let me reach for it here. have a picture of one of the aliens been working for the United States Pentagon for the last 58 years. His name is Val, Val Valiant Thor. He's right here. There's my father in the background. This old place, the ready room of the USS Eldridge, Al Bielica has probably explained or maybe even shown you this picture. There's a list of the some of the notable people in it. They're all the atomic bomb scientists of the day, all the uh, time variant uh, experimentalists of the day, all the top physicists of, of that particular day. This was, in, this was in August of 1943. Now this guy has not changed one iota in 58 years. Started work, he came here, crashed here or whatever, whether he's under duress or not, he started work for our U.S. Navy and military operations in 1937, uh, either 37 or 38 is what I've been told. So it's for 58 years, this man's been employed, probably under duress. If you don't do as we say, we're just going to use you for alien bait or something. I don't know. But anyway, he basically hasn't changed. He lives for 490 years, what he says his lifespan is. Now, he's supposedly a semi-benevolent, he's a human-looking type person. He has six fingers and six toes, and he's got one oversized heart one lung, giant lung, uh, his blood vessels are bigger, he's got copper oxide for blood similar to an octopus, uh, his brain capacity 300 centimeters greater than ours, he has a thinking capacity, uh, IQ, if, if you were to measure it, be totally off the scale, be about a 1200 IQ, um, he speaks a hundred languages fluently, alien as well as others, um, he's a remarkable person, I had a chance to meet him one time. Now, um, by the way, he doesn't shake hands. He's kind of in a spacesuit because all aliens, regardless benevolent or otherwise, they're carrying germs and diseases and bacterium in and on them that are deadly to us. If, if I were making policy, I, I'd quarantine them all because, because 
How do we not know that some of our diseases like AIDS, Ebola, uh, hantavirus, and a few of these other weird designer diseases, as I call them, are not made from the cadavers of some of these aliens as a biological weapon to use against the people of the United States. Well, I'm tired. I'm a tired American speaking out. Now, what I'm telling you is kind of a, almost like a brain overload here. Back in 1946, we set off a number, actually four atomic bomb tests at Bikini Atoll. It's a group of islands in the South Pacific. I have an original photograph here with original language on the photograph that shows there is a large alien spaceship off a wingtip of a United States aircraft. It was a drone aircraft right at the point where the bomb was beginning to show a neutron flash cloud. Here's the bomb going off. Here's the airplane tip here, and here is the alien spacecraft. Now, in 1947, excuse me, 1947, questions later, please. In 1947, after Roswell debacle, our military got before the U.S. Senate. They were hauled before the U.S. Senate and says, what's going on here? Well, we didn't know anything about disks until this happened. It flopped in our backyard. Total lie. They lied to the U.S. Senate. They should have been prosecuted as traitors. Anybody lying to a United States Senator or House of Representative, any Senator or House of Representative person, President of the United States, Vice President, any, any Cabinet member, lying to the American public is a traitor and should be dealt with in an appropriate fashion. This is actual proof, positive, that this occurred in 1946. Now, U.S. military knew all about flying disks and flying disk technology as early early as 1933. Of course, we remember the Germans did too, the Nazi Germans, Hitler and all, all their bunch of people. Now, it gets to the big question, if, if all this has been hidden from us, you know, everybody says, well, where's the proof? I've got some of the proof laying on the table. But a lot of you probably are totally skeptical. They say, well, I could be anything. hand here, I have a piece of what's called corbamite. It's the heaviest element in the world. Element 140. This piece of material weighs 15 ounces. It's three and a half times the weight of uranium. It cannot be made to emit gamma rays. It cannot be isotoped. It is totally stable. It is used in all stealth aircraft and all Phoenix-class submarines. When combined with other alien elements, it is impregnable. It cannot be melted with charged particle beam weapon. When properly combined in secretive compounds, it can withstand temperatures in excess of 10 million degrees Fahrenheit. It is grown by aliens who have given a good... The other side of the alien question is, some of these aliens have broken off from their mainstream and said, we're not getting a fair shake, and so this is what happens. And I'm talking about the alien graves. Some of them broken away. They're talk about not being popular. But this particular piece of metal is an amazing piece of technology. It's capable of being grown in 15 different crystal systems. Now, I'm a geologist, and I, prior to 15 or 20 years ago, knew of only six crystal systems. 
and it's actually 15 if you count all the alien metals. Now, this is only element 140. If you look at the local periodic table in your local library, it says 104. Somewhere down the line, we've been lied to and we've been cheated. What we have to do is we have to literally ask for the truth. If we cannot ask for the truth, we must demand the truth. We must take it before courts of law and common law systems, and we must demand it. If we cannot do this, our founding fathers told us the only thing left is to overthrow, to get the parasites out. I don't advocate overthrow, but it does look like this may be the only alternative.